In October 1958, physicist William Higginbottom created what is thought to be the first video game ever. It was a very simple tennis game, similar to the classic 1970s video game Pong, and was quite a hit at the Brookhaven National Laboratory Open House. And you might be curious, okay, fine, what does this have to do with building the Agbronco? Well, yes. Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into the Act Bronco Prime, a mastery rank 10 secondary weapon. As per the usual, I'm gonna have a cheaper build, something that most Tenno should be able to build, but rest assured we also have the end game set up with a Riven. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. I'm gonna take my time and explain whatever I feel is necessary for newer players. So in case you're a vet, and you already know most of this stuff, please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Ak Bronco Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Ak Bronco Prime is a pretty simple and straightforward secondary weapon. Essentially, you are dual wielding these teapots of Death of Doom. They have this whole steampunk feel about them, but essentially, they are shotguns. And they also have this cool animation, I don't know if you can see this, but the little teapot thingy kinda spins around as you fire. But this being a shooter, you don't really get to see a whole lot of that happening. When it comes to usability though, the weapon is riddled with issues, issue after issue. First off, it's got quite the kick on it, such recoil like this. Second of all, the spread, now it is a shotgun, but still, this is simply hilarious. Essentially, you are firing at the entire screen. This is, uh, let's say, 5 meters till the target, something along these lines, and take a look at that. None of the, not a single pellet actually was in the crosshair. So my friends, with these two, you gotta be like point blank range and kinda start shooting. And you might say, well, if I'm point blank range, what's to stop me from pulling out my big stick and slapping him with my big stick? I know, it's, I, perhaps you wanna just use secondary weapon. Maybe that is the whole point to the Ak Bronco Prime. Mm. Not only that, but you also got a magazine of only eight. That's it. And then you reload. The animation is standard. And did you notice what Digital Extremes does when it comes to ack weapons most of the time? Well, they double the magazine because, you know, there's two of them. They increase the fire rate because, you know, there's two of them. And they also kind of increase the reload speed because you don't have two hands to reload one. And also increase the recoil because, again, you don't longer have two hands to handle one gun. And that's kind of it. Don't get me wrong, it makes sense and it's still super cool, but I believe that ack weapons should get an extra advantage. Perhaps a special mod, huh? Hmm, who knows. Let's check out the stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is 60 out of 60, and if your Ack Bronco Primes comes with 30 out of 30, you to actions, plug in the Auto King Catalyst, doubling your mod capacity. It costs 20 plat to have one installed, you can grind it from Nightwave, you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie and some events in Warframe also feature an Auto King Catalyst as a possible reward. When you're a newer player in Warframe, you gotta run after these catalysts, but later on when you become a vet, you're not really gonna have any issue with them, especially not with the other ones. Mm. My Ag Bronco Prime has been format a total of four times. This is not a format heavy weapon. Two format normally should be more than enough. Accuracy of 3.7. <sighs> Horrible. I mean, don't get me wrong, these are shotguns. I get it. Dual wielding teapot shotguns, but it's just horrible. Allow me to show you what happens if you go with Magnum Force and minus 55% accuracy. <laughs> that is weird. I know, 3.7 minus 55% does not mean 3.1. You're gonna have to talk to DE on that. I understand the formula, but it's just a weird way. And never mind, just bug them about it. It's fine, trust me. It's okay. Not that it would matter all that much. Do we even dare to attempt 10 meters? I think this was it, 10 meters. Okay, this is 15, never mind. Let's go to 10, which is less than what we usually do, but fine, let's go to 10. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that is just stupid. <laughs> you control that, bro. <laughs> that, that is just silly. And take into account, it also kicks like a bloody mule. So again, point blank range. Crit chance? What crit chance? 6%? <laughs> it gets better and better with this one. Perhaps Prime Pistol Camp, it will save you. No, it won't. Nah, no, nah, it won't. 17.2 with this one. If you want to crit with this one, you gotta get yourself an Adders above, uh, or perhaps even the Smith above, uh, Harrow or uh, Arcane Avenger. That's it. That's all you can do. 
bonus additive after effects if you want to crit with this one. The critical multiplier is not bad, 2.0x. So you can go to 4.2 prime target cracker, but again, you can't get that crit chance up by the weapons mods. Mm. Fall off between 9 and it doesn't even matter what kind of fall off. It's not like you can use it outside of point blank range. So there you go. Fire rate of 4.33. If you want to fire it quickly, you might as well bind it to your scroll wheel because digital extreme stance on macros is you do so at your own risk. A link in the cards right now, if you don't believe me, yeah, they're that gangster when it comes to macros. <laughs> Multi-shot of 7, that's the default number of pellets fired by the gun. Noise alarming, reload on 2.3. Now, this is a very lengthy reload, considering that you fire only 8 shots. Yes, a lot of pellets, but still 8 shots, then you reload. Riven Dispo, 4 out of 5. And honestly, considering that this weapon is 100% riddled with usability issues, I'm surprised it's not 5. It's 4 out of 5. Sky high and they're of course very cheap. How cheap? Well, people consider them to be essentially garbage, so they dissolve them. Status for projectile is good though, very good 12.9. Semi-automatic because automatic would have been too hard. And the damage, if you think it was bad up until this point, wait, it gets worse. It's impact based. It's like they don't want us to use the weapon. But fear not, fear not, they are aware that the... Ag Bronco Prime is not exactly fantastic and they're doing something about it. The question is, is it enough or not? Weapon Exodus mod slot, worth unlocking or not? Well, yeah, definitely. Steady hands will take care of the recall. You might say, hey dude, here we go, targeting subsystems, yeah, we fixed it. No, this doesn't fix that. Basically, you don't even see this one. You don't even feel this one in actual gameplay when it comes to the spread of the pellet. So don't even bother. I mean, sure, you can try pistol ammo mutation. If you're ever gonna run out of ammo, sure, but my advice, steady hands on this one. And let's talk about a standard build, shall we? And he got damage with Hornet Strike and Magnum Force, multi shot with Battle Diffusion, Lethal Torrent, Critical Chance, Critical... Nope! <laughs> no crit chance, no crit damage, my friends. It's simply not worth it on this one. So instead, we're gonna pile on that status chance. At the start of 2020, DE wanted to make status chance more... Important! It's more important! Congratulations! You've destroyed build diversity in the process. It's fine. It doesn't matter. So, Pistol Pestilence, Jolt, and Scorch. Free of the 60-60 mods. Now, here's the advantage of the Ag Bronco Prime. With the release of, uh, what's it called? Uh, Heart of Deimos, we got this mod, the Mazvate. I'm not sure if you pronounce it like... 240% viral. And that means, especially since I can't really build crit directly on it, I can have viral, corrosive, and heat. Absolutely bloody insane. The most powerful elements you can have outside of the IPS, which, like, Slash would be extremely powerful. But we don't have Slash. Yes, not enough Slash. Do not put plus IPS mods on this weapon. It's a dumb idea. Now, heat, viral, and corrosive. Absolutely bloody outstanding. And you might think that this build can make a difference. The question is, does it make a big enough difference or not? Let's test it, shall we? Let's test it. Uh, level 120, Corrupted Heavy Goons, as per huge, my friend. As per you guys know huge, fantastic fellow. Now, oh, look at that, but I'm reloading. If I was to go shot by shot, let's say you're, you're in melee range and you don't want to use your melee for whatever reason. One, two, three. That's fantastic. But the problem is the spread is so stupid, I really gotta be in melee range. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy for shotguns, but this is too much. This is exaggeration. Even without Magnum Force on it, it's still not overly fantastic. But perhaps you're a player like me. Perhaps you like this weapon simply because it's got a quirky, cool design. Simply because it's got that steampunk kind of feeling. And simply because you want to be a hipster and you don't want to play with what everybody plays because... I never got why, but here you go. The weapon can definitely pack a serious punch. Would you like to make it into a sled? We can try. Let me show you why that was a bad idea to begin with. Let me show you. Let me show you. Seeing is believing, yes. Yeah, put on more IPS mods. They try to do something with these things, but it wound up not really working. We're gonna go like this, like this, like this, and like this. What do we got now on the weapon, my friends? Well, we got a lot of slash. No, we don't. We got 53. That's not a lot of slash. No. It's not even half of impact. And before you used to have the X4 IPS rule. That's gone now. 
So, honestly, you can't really build slash on this one. Not that I'm not tired of all the slash from primary weapons. And that's pretty much it for a normal standard build. This is what I would recommend for you guys. Go like so. I think that Damas Vati is a fantastic mod, but it's not enough to fix all the problems that this weapon sadly has. Don't get me wrong, it's cool to use, but perhaps a Riven can save it, huh? Perhaps with a Riven, it will be godlike. Certain Rivens definitely make a godlike impression on certain weapons. Will it be the case on this one? Now, considering the critical stats and not taking into account any outside buffs, let's say you're not thinking of using it just with Harrow, for example, your ideal Riven is going to be damage multi-shot harmless negative or damage multi-shot with an element and a harmless negative. What I got is this. Mm. I tried to roll. I didn't. I didn't get lucky, unfortunately, but this is still pretty good. Damage, multi-shot, and status chance. Now, that damage, take a look at what 4 out of 5 does. 220% damage, Hornet Strike. 120% multi-shot, Battle Diffusion. 94.6 status chance. Essentially, that's 3 mods into 1 at full bloody power, which is absolutely fantastic. And we can try it like so. But of course, using this Riven on the weapon means I no longer have heat. It went to zero, so I got Viral, Corrosive, Impact, Puncture, and Slide put Steady Hands. Let's try it like so. Same level 120 Corrupted Heavy Goons as per the usual, my friends. Now we're gonna go straight for a headshot. One, two, three. Hmm. Well, that doesn't seem like a fantastic improvement, does it? It still takes bloody three shots. To wait, wait a second. What just happened there? Two shots. <laughs> Interesting. Isn't it, my friends? Definitely. Normally it takes about two, depending on what you roll, to be perfectly honest. So yeah, it is a pretty big improvement. But, but, here's the issue here. Why am I even using Viral at this point? It doesn't really help me all that much if I don't have Slash. Or at least Heat, let me have Heat. That would help me, right? So what you can do in this particular circumstance, considering that you're not really getting all that big of a benefit out of the fire rate anyway on Lethal Torrent, drop this one and go for just a little bit a Scorch. So you don't drop the new mod, which is, yay, 240%, yeah, you get it, right? So now you got your back to Heat, Viral, and Corrosive, and you would have your Riven mod as well. Will it make a big difference? Well, none, not one that you're gonna be able to discern if these were like higher level, perhaps. One, two, still dead. <laughs> Get the point? Yeah. Well, my friends, that's pretty much it for my Riven setup. And again, my issue with the weapon is the fact that I need to reload all the time. If this one, if this one had a magazine of 20 or something along those lines, it would be absolutely fantastic. Because in normal missions, you're not gonna freeze your enemy still with, I don't know, some CC and then go one, and then you're gonna wait for him to stop and then two, right? You're just gonna open fire, right? That's a lot more fun. Now, there's still one more thing that we can do. Get this weapon to one-shot. Now, can how can we get this weapon? Mm, Lady Mirage Prime or Harrow. Definitely, we can talk about Lord. Which one do you want to do first? Harrow or Lady Mirage? Let's do the weaker one first, Harrow. I'm sorry, Harrow mains. I love him. He's on my top three Warframes, but he's just simply not as strong as Mirage. Now that he's got, like, I love this fashion for him. Hold on. Let me show you my Paladin Harrow. It's actually Priest Harrow. Was it Priest Harrow? Check out my Priest Harrow. You guys like it? Absolutely freaking love this one. It's one of my fashion frame bits. I don't remember which, though. Now, since I get my crit from Harrow, what am I dropping here? I need to get some critical damage on this guy. Should I drop one of the elementals? I'm not gonna drop my Riven, definitely. Or I can even drop, honestly, the brand new mod. But because it's the new mod and etc. and all of that, I'm just gonna drop Magnum Force for now and get that critical damage on. Like so. You can get even more critical damage than this, but this will suffice. We're going to 4.2 critical chance from Harrow. Of course, we're gonna go with Corrosive Projection. This is meta when it comes to heavily armored targets. Arcane Avenger, another 45% bonus additive after. You can change this one around, but considering the base crit chance on this one, trust me, it's fine to have Avenger. As for Rage, uh, Rage will not help us. Precision will help us. If you don't like farming Arcanes, you can buy them from the trade chat. You can think of them as more... Well, they're actually basically another slot for mods, essentially, if you grind it down to the, its bare essence. Now, there's an event in Warframe called the Spear, which is Scarlet, rolls around, it's a lot easier to get your Arcanes. If not, go high title on. trust me, it's not horrible. We're not gonna be using a Sentinel because it's a secondary weapon, so the Vigilante mods do not apply. Mm -hmm. 
Level 150, Corrupted Heavy Goons, as per usual, we're gonna be simulating. And of course, I'm gonna be getting my crit buff from Harrow's fantastic 4th ability. Take a look. Beautiful, absolutely bloody beautiful. His second ability will grant us fire rate as well as reload speed. I'm definitely digging on the reload speed in this circumstance, but the fire rate ain't all that fantastic because again, I'm trying to get all those pellets in the target's head, especially now since I got crit chance and I got crit damage as well. One. Haha, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, my friends. Take a look at that. You love the numbers. If this weapon had crit, it would be freaking insane, man. Would it be one of the best weapons in the game? Depends on how much crit they would give it. But honestly, even though this is impressive, it's easy. It's easy for me to make a weapon look impressive with Mirage or Harrow or something of the sort. It's not really all that difficult. But the matter at hand is that this weapon simply suffers from too many usability issues for me to recommend it. There are so many other, more powerful secondary weapons which are a lot more easier to use and have less quirks. The only reason to truly use this weapon is style. Do you want some style? And at the end of the day, veterans will be playing with this one because they don't really need all that power. They understand they don't need the most powerful anything in Warframe, for the most part. Not even Eidolons require cookie cutter setups anymore. Well, not as cookie cutter as before. You still got the do's and the don'ts, definitely. Please don't bring a Hydroid to Eidolon. Stop doing that. I don't know who, got, who told you guys that, but you need to stop with the Hydroids and Eidolon hunts. So that's Hero. Beautiful, beautiful. The priest of uh, the priest of Critter's Holy. No, Holy Crit. I got it. I got it. Mm. And now finally, Lady Mirage Prime. Come on. You didn't think I would let you guys high and dry. The fashion shall be this one. It basically mimics the Prime look, but it's just a little bit better if you ask me. As before, we're going to go with Corrosive Projection. And we're going to go with Arcane Precision and Avenger. Like so. Now, the beauty with Mirage is that if you compare it to Harrow, you don't really need to go for a headshot necessarily, okay? You're not forced into a headshot anymore. Mental note, put Empower on Harrow or something else which would be awesome. Maybe Roar, Roar on Harrow or Empower? Empower or Roar on Harrow? Oh, I need to check that one out. Uh, I can go for a body shot and just completely annihilate, okay? I no longer necessarily 100% need to go for that headshot. So, of course, Mirage is a little bit more permissive because that's the kind of frame she is. Both frames, Mirage and Harrow, have some trouble surviving, depending on what's the ability that you put using your uh, helmet uh, system. Of course, a lot of us don't resist the temptation to put on more damage, but honestly, these frames, by default, don't really require another offensive ability. You can put something defensive if you really want them to survive but at the end of the day you know what fun is fun and it's subjective what might be fun for you might not be fun for me and vice versa as for the agronco prime i love these idea i absolutely adore the idea of having personalized mods that can make these ag weapons a little bit more relevant because again when they build when they make when they give us these ag weapons you got double the magazine higher recoil uh, longer reload, faster fire rate. And normally that's pretty much it. If we had something a bit more that would add to the personality of the weapon, that would be insane. But the Masvati is just simply not enough. The weapon is riddled with usability issues and I on can only really recommend it if you want a little bit of style. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, hey, consider supporting us via Patreon. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.